This is a robot vacuum straight out of a trash. Haven't touched it, haven't had it apart. Wanna make a bet whether or not it works. Oh, we have a light. Well, that's going to wreak havoc, isn't it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Stop. Well, let, let's, let, let's not vacuum the camera charger. Robot vacuum. Straight into the trash. Just plug it in and... Well, didn't even need to charge it first. Okay, I've taken it out of there twice, it really wants to get to that spot. <laughs> well, this is going to take a while. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Okay, so since the uh, actual vacuum cleaner part seems to be working absolutely perfectly, uh, and uh, I let it uh, run for as long as it would, and then I recharged the battery, and it basically seems to be at about 1.7 amp hours out of its rated 2.5, given some rough estimations. So there doesn't really seem to be anything wrong with the actual va uh, ro robot vacuum cleaner. So. It did come with this uh, really dinky, extremely lightweight uh, AC adapter, which has one of these. Uh, how do you? Universal pluggy things on them, and uh, to be frank, I've never seen one of these of high quality. So, who'd be willing to bet that uh, the actual plug pack is the failure mode of this uh, vacuum? Because it does seem to be of a quite old origin, I haven't been able to see any brand on it, so it's probably one of the in-store in brand type things. And uh, it's probably straight out of China. So let's just break this thing apart before we plug it in to uh, figure out if there's something horribly wrong with it. If it's just on the brink of failing with some bad caps, uh, I'd rather just not plug it in before I've seen it, because it can happen if you try to lower these down, they'll just to blow up on you and give you a much harder time to repair them than just replacing a few bad caps. So, let's just uh, bring out the hammer. Well, the first glance, this looks like actually quite a high quality device. Wow. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yes, we actually seem to have. Uh, well, actually, what do we have? The big cap uh, seems to be a Samsung with an S rather than the X. I don't know if that's the same thing as Samsung, but. Could that be a Chinese copy of Samsung? I'm not sure. Oh, this is another Samsung. 10 microfarads, 400 volts. What? What's going on here? Why do they have two primary caps? That's really weird. Never seen that before. Well, I have, but not in one of these tiny things. What are these? 470, 25. Another Samsung. And uh, last one seems to be a 47025 
in a different style package. So that's a really odd combination. And what's even weirder, there doesn't seem to be any suppression choke between those two, because that's where you usually have the two secondary caps. You have rectifier cap, choke cap, in order to just clean everything up a bit more, but perhaps we've got this uh, resistor between them instead. Nope, that just seems to be straight in series for the 8-bit uh, lead. That's weird. Other than that, this charger looks really good. Really, really good. We've got a very, very proper se primary secondary isolation. This transformer looks giant for its... Uh, well, I suppose it's a 22 watt... Uh, well, 20 watt, 20 watts at 1 amp supplies. So I suppose you would expect it to be rather large, but uh, we've got a uh, proper little filtering cap down in there, a yeah, little very good looking uh, primary side filtering choke. Is that for rectifier? No, oh, that's for rectifier, obviously the large diode, so this has to be the fuse. Is that blown, maybe? Let's just use the uh, off-camera meter to verify. Nope, that looks okay. There really doesn't seem to be anything obviously wrong with this thing. No pits in any ICs, no nothing. Well, I'd almost be inclined to hook this up to something. It's it's a universal voltage model, so we can just uh, hook it up to the lamp post supply and, and give it a whirl. Right, 150 volts. Okay, we've got the, the secondary hooked up to the meter, so let's just uh, flick it. I'm guessing 20 volts. So, at this stage, I'm almost comfortable just <laughs> putting this main adapter back together because uh, also I'm not going to measure through the caps, uh, but it really seems to be in perfectly good working order. Weird. Nope. From what I can tell, this AC adapter is in absolutely perfect health, so uh, let's just see what it does with uh, proper 230 mains. Seems okay. And if we load it down with just a pure resistive DC load of 8 ohms, well, it currently misses to 1 amp. That's perfect. <laughs> it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. We'll work down to 4. Now then it shuts off. But it gets on straight away. And 16 ohms, we should get 16 volts. 16 volts, 21 watts. Absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with this AC adapter. So what's it going to do? Will we just uh, hook it up to a vacuum? Maybe if the DC plug is broken? Nope. Charging it front is 3 watts. Hmm. Now it's done. Since I charged the battery yesterday, that's what you should expect, so... And of charge detection seems to be working just fine as well. So I suppose this is just an entirely <laughs> fully working robot vacuum of, uh, I suppose, not the latest model. Perhaps the old owner just didn't like it. Perhaps they thought the colour was off because uh, I suppose it is a bit bright green. But beyond that, it seems to be in perfect working order. So, uh, thank you for watching. Cheerio. <laughs> okay, well, I was just expecting that it would uh, run off the bench. Wow, this is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah, indeed, when you look underneath it, it's actually got an array of three little probably infrared sensors to detect if it's about to fall off a ledge. So, huh, that's pretty good. I thought it just had the bumper sensor in the front, because it seems to be a pretty stupid model. Although it uh, does have this uh, weird 
flash lamp looking thing on the underside. I'm not entirely certain as to what that's supposed to do. It's even giving you a big warning about not to look into it, although I've never seen it flash underneath it. It also seems to have some form of a IR receiver thing right there in the front of it. Perhaps that's for some kind of a remote control or something which I didn't get with it. I just got the vacuum and the charger, not even a docking station. All these questions could probably be answered by the manual, but uh, I haven't even been bothered googling this thing since I haven't had any reason to, since it seems to just work entirely fine. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll let you look up the manual on your own if you want to. Cheerio! Oh, one final thing. Uh, I just adore the battery solution on this uh, vacuum, because you just have a door, and uh, then you have your battery. Now, I added the polarity mark in it while charging it, but just look at these contacts. They're just two metal plates on an entirely dumb battery. You poke it down and it's there. No connectors, no nothing. It's, it's wonderful. Why can't the big brand names come up with stuff like this? I recently serviced a Samsung thing and it... Uh, not only did it have a battery cover screwed on, but it had a dinky little connector that you could barely get your hands in to remove. It was a uh, god knows how old uh, Chinese thing. Has that a neat solution? Also, this is a UV lamp for supposedly killing bacteria. How do you service one of these uh, really worn down, basically destroyed uh, corner brushes? Well, all they need is a drill and some uh, broom hair things, whatever you'd call these. I'm just going to drill four holes on each side and pull them through, making little loops. Not going to be as uh, nice as the original one, but I think this might do for the corner sweeping action. Certainly better than nothing. There we go. Perhaps a bit coarse, but I think it'll work. Or maybe not. Oh well.